I mean, you know what amazes me? I, I saw a photo the day, Rob. Jeff Bezos from back 1990-ish, or the 1990s, anyway, in his garage on a desk when he's uh, set up Amazon.com. That's where he started. Fast forward, what, 25, 30 years or so? It's a fucking trillion-dollar company, and he's, he's occasionally the richest man in the world, I think. Certainly over 100 billion. He's in the 100 billion-plus club. He's doing all right. So he's, he's not far behind me, you know? Yeah, I'm not far. He'll get there one day tomorrow. He'll get there one day. And as you know, I've been trying to get M82. Now, the, the Kindle's on sale already. So if you want the Kindle, just head on over to the Kindle store. M82's there. It's even on Kindle Limited. So if you've got the Kindle Limited, you can read it for, for nothing or part of your subscription, right? I try to get the book listed. Now, this, this is getting Kafkaesque. This, this is what something out of fucking Kafka. I have two books. I have this one, M82, and I have my original one, Critical Business Fast One. This has been on Amazon for uh, at least 11 years this summer. This one I added a few weeks ago, and the fucking shit comprehensively hit the fan. I made the mistake, it seemed, to basing my new listing for this book on the original listing for this book but it's legit you can do that it allows you to do it and no matter even if i did the wrong thing it should not allow me to do what has happened because for some reason amazon was convinced the system was convinced the isbn for this book referred to this book and it wouldn't let me change it so i went through I went through Amazon support, and in the end, whoever it was has gone in himself or herself and changed the title. Because I kept saying, no, you, you, can't, you can't call this ISBN tagged book M82 because it's already called this. So they went in and changed that, right? And you think, oh, I've got for that. Done. No. Because this has got reviews attached to it. And the new listing for this book has also got the reviews for this book. All right, gets even better. For some reason, which I should come to in a moment, I couldn't actually sell any copies of this because no matter how much inventory I put in, not available. But there are second-hand copies of this available, apparently, three of them. What? And when you click on it, uh, ah, when you click on three copies available, you go through to the listing of this book. It's a fucking shit show. And I, re I recorded this loop, right? And we can even put the link in the posting of the podcast because it's fucking hilarious. I'm laughing. I was like, look, I'll keep you my good humor here, but this is just ridiculous. They're my head in. I, and, and then they started saying things like, well, you, you know, you need a certificate of you, your right to sell this stuff and everything else. I said, look, I, I wrote both of these books. I own all of the rights to both of them. I do it. I said, there is no manufacturer other than me. There's no one to talk to other than me. You know, that's it. So, turns out, before I could do anything else, I've now got to prove that my company is who it, what it says it is and is entitled to have any kind of listing at all on Amazon. So, yesterday I had to upload a printout from, well, I, I downloaded from the CRO, Company Record Office, right? That's the Irish company's house. Now they want more. Now they want the art my articles of association, which again I can get from this CRO. But it's just it is it's not like something out of fucking Kafka. All this because I wanted to list this book. Look, he does my nutting. How they became a trillion dollar business, I don't know. But it wasn't like I mean I do understand. I, I'm not getting mad with them because one. It ain't, that, it ain't the individual person's fault. They, they would have fucking processes for this because they must have hundreds, possibly thousands, possibly tens of thousands of new products added every single day. And they do have to be careful who's selling what. I know they do. They've got to be really careful. Because apart from anything else, if, if they, for instance, if someone's selling knockoff Rolexes on Amazon, the FTC in the States won't go after these individual sellers. They'll go after Amazon themselves. So I'll get it. I, they have to be really fucking careful. And I'm, and I'm just a nobody. I don't... I don't, I mean, I'm getting a different person responding to my queries every single day. I, I'm not big enough to warrant my own account manager. And I, get, I don't have a problem with that either. I'm not getting like a, I'm not a Karen about it. 
this just fucking doing my head in. As you can see, I'm keeping my good humour. It's been two and a half weeks now. Well, if Jeff Bezos would stop getting hench and shagging his Latina misses on his 100 million foot yacht, maybe these issues wouldn't happen, eh? Yeah, I, I, I was speaking to him. I mentioned to him next time we see you. <laughs> Mate, I fucking Jeff Bezos. He's a bit of a G. He, he he was a massive geek. He put his head down. He worked really fucking hard. Built this massive company. And as soon as it got to a certain size, he was like, "I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to buy uh, the biggest yacht I can afford, shag all these birds, and get hen. And, and why not? You just want it, right? I, I'll it's... tell you right now. If I had a hundred billion dollar fucking fortune i wouldn't be doing this <laughs> i'll be on that fucking boat next to his shagging birds p- p- passing them over the railings you know so anyway I, and really that, that kind of segues into this thing about if you want something doing properly do it yourself you know unfortunately i can't what a segue what a segue you can't trust people to do things with well you know we, we it's no secret we're very big on direct mail I mean, if you're if you're listening to this and you're finding it harder and harder to get clients of business on um, social media, and if you're on social media and you are listening to this, you will be finding it harder. I almost guarantee it. If you're not, I'll be my fucking take my hat off to you know. Um, but then I will also assure you it won't last. It can't last. It's inevitable. This is going to decline. Yeah. The reasons I can I do explain to you in the death of social media, white paper, which is freely available to anyone who wants it. Just let me have your post and just send it to you. But anyway, so we're very big on direct mail. Um, but one of the things stopping people doing direct mail, never mind that it, it's more expensive it's, and it's pa- all paid up front, unlike social media, which is free at the point of delivery and you just do it as you go along. You know, um, The thing about direct mail is it's actually quite complex too. I mean, we've got a very simple mailer. I don't know how long Barry could go on here. No, I haven't. Anyway, we've got a simple mail. Again, it's a, it's eight pages, so it's four pieces of paper, eight sides. Um, a handwritten note, a photograph, and it goes in an envelope. Or even just doing a dozen of those takes me a couple of hours because, you know, Holly hands writes the notes. So I print them out. Um, I staple them together by hand. I staple the photograph by hand. This is deliberate, by the way. It's not because we're tight. It's because we want it to look as it is authentic and personal so we hand do this stuff yeah the envelope's handwritten so real live stamp and an air mile stick right holly hand writes the note i think i probably said that. so it takes and after this is a good afternoon for work i mean it, it's it's kind of it doesn't take much longer to do say 12 than it does to do one because the you know setting the printer up i've got to do it once so it's, it's printer then churns it out but it, it's it's quite involved and doing that at scale yourself is frankly a ball ache. Yeah. So what we're we doing about it, Connor? Setting up our own shop. We are actually setting up a, a separate business. We'll probably incorporate it as a separate business. Yeah, we'll to do this for us. But what else are we doing, Connor? As well as doing it for ourselves, we're going to be doing it for other people. I know, that's quite scary, isn't it? Because we don't like other people, do we, Carl? We, we we don't, but I, I quite like those that have the bollocks to send a multi-step, aggressive, direct mail campaign that isn't full of glossy pictures and brochures, oh. and they're willing to embrace our weird and wonderful ways of purposely staining letters, crumpling them, leaving crumbs in pizza boxes, washing out peri-peri bottles just to stuff them with other things for the prospects to read. Those yeah. sort of people, we quite like. Yeah, well, I have got one. This is the kind of, this is the front page of our mailer. Coffee stain, fingerprints, highlighting, handwriting. That's the kind of thing we send out. Now, there are loads of people out there doing this. There's print. I mean, there's, there's, loads, there's almost anywhere, any, any printer, so any high street printer, such as Blaby Print in, in the UK, the guys we used to work with and still do on occasion for sense. Yeah, we still do. Used to be owned by my cousin Rob. Really nice chap. But Blaby Print, if you're in the UK. Um 
they'll, they'll do your normal run of the mill direct mail all day long. This is not hard to get. But the, the thing is that it goes out in an envelope with a, usually with a franc on it, and it's a, it's a label stuck on the envelope. So it's not really what we want. It's it's out, it's particularly good for stuff people have paid for already. Yeah, but for, for direct mileage. Yeah, but for, for 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 getting new business, it's not so good. But you can go the the right place online that would do personalised direct mail outreach at scale. I had one guy <laughs> tried to sell me it the other week. Worst salesman in the world. Um, that's easily done. But the problem with all this stuff, and this is why we will we'll be doing it for some clients ourselves with a lot of fucking caveats. The problem with it is they're almost like a send direct mail on demand. So no matter what shit you give them, they will print it. I mean, they've obviously got some parameters of what they can and can't do. But you could send them the worst sales letter in the world and they'll just say, yeah, great, we'll do that at scale. We won't do that. We won't. Yeah, if you come to us, uh, we would prefer to be sending direct mail for our core controllers and our elites because they're, then they're already in our world. They've had the train. If we have some, yeah, and they've had the train. But if we had someone come to us and say, oh, we want you to a direct mail, well okay tentatively we'll do that but you have to go through this process first and we won't send something we don't think is going to work so if you come to us with a glossy glossy brochure say oh, i want to send this at scale so oh, there's loads of printers will do that for you because we ain't going to do it nor so, will we send a server heart if we haven't reviewed the back end oh no yeah absolutely no we we won't allow anything out of our print shop that we don't have a stamp our, our metaphorical seal of approval on that won't guarantee it's going to work, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Far from it. If Dan Kennedy is allowed to fail seven times out of eight, so are we. <laughs> um, different, different kind of stuff we're sending, though. So we will be doing it for uh, clients, but it's going to be a very tightly managed process. Not on demand. It's by application, I suppose, isn't it? And, and, and vetting from us, which also means it ain't going to be cheap either. Because believe me, if, if I'm sitting down to write direct mail mailers for you like this, you, know, you are going to be paying a lot of money for that. Mm. And but it's all it's all you can't really. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to look at the cover price without realizing what you get from it. You know, we won't be dealing with people who are selling fucking boxes of paper clips. You know, the same Viking Direct. We're going to be dealing with people who sell services because services are easy to sell into businesses. Because that's what we sell ourselves. So, you know, you're going to be looking at, you're selling something, four or five figures at least, trestle minimum five, high fours, um, because then it, it, it costs in. If you're paying us, I don't know, 10, 15K to set up your mailing, you've only got to get one or two clients and you've made your money back. The economies make sense. No, is yeah, economies are I'm, I'm no idiot. I've, been doing a lot mm. of thinking into this and there's many companies out there that you know their, their average deal price is high six figures some even pushing the millions where well, they only need one and the mailing yeah is worth right. it. and these deals they take longer to close more often than not they take longer to seduce the person of influence into even having a conversation so yeah we're, we're not going to be mass producing cheap shit to sell cheap shit nor will we allow you to come to us with glossy brochures nor we will we no, no, allow no. you to ask us to design you a glossy brochure if you want to do that you can go to somewhere else and we'll happily send you that i mean i mean this isn't to say by the way that glossy brochures can't be used to sell direct response wise because i've done it with clients but it still means we would be designing it for you or at least guiding the designer if you've got a graphic designer because i've reviewed recently a couple of um white papers people have had designed by graphic designers and they've been designed with aesthetics first okay aesthetics in mind first before readability which makes no sense whatsoever because a white paper although it's a sales piece it's also supposed to be educational and informational well you can't educate any form if people ain't reading it or can't read it you know huge blocks of reverse type in a, in a narrow font. I was like, that paper ain't going to bother. I mean, my, my white paper, 
Pelly saw his printer again. Well, of course, most people, when they've got their own printer, I've got a good printer, they turned good quid about 10 years ago. That's a high end printer. Most people have got a cheap Epson and picked up a Tesco, which is great for your odd letter here and there, but it's not good for mass emails. This is my white paper. It's designed for readability. You know, it's really easy and pleasant to read. The, 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 the process of reading in the paper gets out of the way of the content to mangle a, a quote from Jeff Bezos as it happens. He said he wanted the Kindle device to get out of the way. That's why it's so simple and plain. That's so, really direct mail. Yeah, setting up our own shop. And we will have canned campaigns and whatnot because we teach various can campaigns. But even as we said, if you're one of our core controllers and whatnot, and you come into our mail shop, we'll be doing a, a triple, quadruple thorough review of the process in and of itself. Because as John said, if something is going out with our rubber stamp, stamp of approval from our shop, from our premises, we're going to make sure it's the gold fucking standard. Well, it's our reputation on the line, isn't it? Mm, fundamentally. But... We're, we're potentially looking at flying you over, aren't we, to the UK? Yes. Poor old England, though. Poor old England. Mm. Scope out some premises. Sniff out yeah, some Yeah, I mean, stuff. it's certainly while you're in Bali, um, I know you're going to be maybe around a bit closer to home for a short period of time. But uh, it, it makes sense to have one of us close on the ground, ready to fucking go and kick ass when we need to, because we will. Yes. Yeah. We we absolutely will. Well, I, I should be around. Actually, to get your cast December. Actually, I thought. I like haven't it. thought. No, I'll talk to you after we've finished. Okay. So, is there any more to say? Really? Not really. I don't think so. Well, on that note, we can finish nice and early. I like a nice early finish. Wife complains, but hey. <laughs> but no, direct mail, I mean, if, if we've got, I don't want to say too much, we, we have got a potential client wants to talk to us who is from a world-renowned sales training people. If I mention the name, you would know it, unless you have absolutely nothing whatsoever about sales training and, you know if you you don't have to be very well educated to have heard the name put it that way they're famous they're huge but we've got a guy who wants to talk to us now if he wants to talk to us it ain't about sales no i'm pretty sure it's not because they're not just a big firm their, their stuff is good so he must only want to talk to us about lead generation and pipeline and stuff and getting people in front of to talk. Bearing in mind, these are a big cold calling firm as well. But if someone from that firm is wanting to talk to us about this stuff, that does tell you something. And if it doesn't, you're probably not listening carefully enough. Oh. You know what I mean. Of course I do. He's the guy you phoned up and he's just knocked you dead in your tracks. Because <laughs> he can play the game better than you can. So you bring in the, the guy who knows what he's doing to me. Ah, I'm never guy knows what he's doing. Hey, is he never is like he on the hook? That one, is he on the hook? Nearly, nearly. He's on the hook. So, hey, I, I, I had a role. I had a part to play. <laughs> Very poor one. <laughs> Very minor role. You were the guy in Coronation Street who walks behind the van at the end of the road that nobody sees. He wasn't very enthusiastic, and I'm not going to be that guy on the phone saying, no, please talk to me, please talk to me. Just admit it, he can play the game better than you can. He, if he favourite, <laughs> then we've won. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Oh, <laughs> Zero-sum game sales, everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're descending oh, into we'll literacy. We'll go. Um, if you want to know more about this mail shop, it's not going to be ready. Um, probably for a few months. Late August. 
it won't be ready for a few months. I'm hesitant to put a date on it. However, we're 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 likely not going to take on more than three clients at first. So if you want to be at the front of that queue, email Holly at wellfedbusiness dot com, and uh, we'll make sure you're at the front of that queue. Yeah. Other than that, and I've got one thing to say on that. Please don't kick tires. No, if you if you talk to us about it, if you want to talk to us about it, make sure you've got money and you're serious. Yeah. We want serious conversations, not speculative tire kicking. I ain't got time for that. I'm nearly 60 years old. I really don't have time. God, you're so old. I know. I feel every fucking minute of it sometimes. Bless you. Right. Mm. See you later, Shaggers. Bye, honeys. <laughs>